I plead the blood of Holy Yahushua over this video and over the mind, body, and spirit of every child of y'all watching this video. In Yeshaya HaMashiach's holy name. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom Priest, and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Queen Aliyah Ora, and woo woo, this is the last video of the playlist. Yay! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Most High Father, praise His Holy Name. Hallelujah! Thank you, Holy Father Ahaya. Thank you, Holy Rabbi Yashaya. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh. Thank you, <laughs> hallelujah. This is proof. I pray that this serves as proof for everyone who has been watching these videos to understand that none of this came from me. If you watch the first video of this ministry all the way through, especially on the playlists, in order, you're going to see that it all makes sense. It has all been wrapped up and we have complete understanding now, today, why the Holy Spirit has taken us through three years or actually four years of training. Uh, we realized recently that when you go to get your Bachelor of Arts at a university at, in college, it takes four years. That's what just happened here with Wakefulness Theology. The Holy Spirit has put us through a four-year spiritual education, and now we are graduating with our uh, Bachelor of Arts, our spiritual Bachelor of Arts in Wakefulness Theology. We have now our spiritual Bachelor of Arts in Holy Yeshaya's university, his school. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Father, for this blessing. We give you all praise, glory, and honor to Ahaya El Shaddai, our Elohim. Also, I want to give a special thanks to everyone who's donated to this ministry, but specifically, Sister Mary, you have helped us uh, in your obedience to the Most High Father and to his kingdom, and out of your, your love and generosity, you have helped us in such a way that we're going to be able to ship my music studio to Africa, to Tanzania, so that we can continue doing our music ministry there. So as you can see behind me, I have two guitars. I have, um, I'm, not take, I'm not taking all of, of this equipment here, but um, I have an amplifier. I have um, <clears throat> microphones and uh, microphone stands, and I have a recording booth. I have all kinds of things. I have records and um, I just very expensive. It's very expensive to ship uh, to Tanzania. From what I've seen so far, it's about um, 80 or 90 euros for five pounds to ship. And when you ship things there, if it's worth more than 400 or $500, you pay taxes on it. So it is extremely expensive to ship there. And I didn't know what to do. I was thinking I would have to sell my guitars. And, and, and then I was thinking, well, I know Father wants me to go there and do a music ministry. So, and then the next day, boom, uh, uh, out of your obedience, uh, Sister Mary, you showed up and you have provided a way for us to do that. So again, all praise and glory and honor to the Most High Father, but I just want to send you my love and, and really gratitude and thank you from Wakefulness Theology. Everyone, all of the priests at Wakefulness Theology, thank you so much, Sister. Now, I had a dream last night. This is the last video, okay? And in this video, 
we are going, I'm going to break down all the dance movements. We're going to review all the meanings of all the letters of Holy Yahushua's name, who now we are uh, re going to be calling Yeshaya. So we, it's like a, a cracker jack box. It's like at the end of the, the cracker jacks, you get a, a gift. At the end of the Happy Meal, you get a toy, you get a gift. And so at the end of this playlist, our, our gift for having completed this work is his real name, his actual name, uh, before it was translated into all the different ways, is Yeshaya Hamashiach. So now we know his actual uh, real name, the name that is personal to us as priests, the name that is also uh, giving power. So I had that dream. I had a dream last night that confirmed that. So let me tell you about this dream. And then we're going to go through and review all the, the uh, steps, the 15 steps of his name. Okay. Uh, for our uh, uh, ascent, uh, as in the Psalms of Ascension, the 15 steps up the mountain to our Aliyah, our spiritual maturity. Um, and so we can get ready to learn how to cast out demons, to heal the sick, and to speak in new tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, my dream last night. This is hardcore, all right? This dream is hardcore. So if you are someone that's going to be easily offended, be prepared to be offended if 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 this is referring to you because uh, it's a chastening. It's a chastening message, okay? And it's not coming from me. It's coming from the Most High Father. So in this dream, this dream woke me up, okay? I was sleeping like a baby in my crib. I was with my Aunt Heather and... Um, we were in bed, I guess, and I was teaching her how to use her spiritual powers, how to call the heavenly fire down from heaven. When I was teaching her this, she, there was there there was a basketball rim that appeared in the in the bedroom or in the room, and she started imagining a monkey I guess and the monkey materialized so it was like her thoughts were materializing instantly and in the dream I knew that that monkey was an unclean spirit or something like that it was negative I I, I don't know it just wasn't good and so I was telling her don't focus on the monkey is what I was saying and so I'm still trying to teach her and, and she's you know manifesting negative things then uh, a man manifested from the basketball uh, rim, the basketball hoop, and it looked like um, Will Smith in Aladdin. Now, it didn't look like his face, but it was like, you know, if you saw Will Smith in Aladdin, it's like this big, muscular, black man, um, but I think he might have had dreadlocks, um, he and he, he just was like a kind of like a genie. He had powers. He was... Sh 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 moving around um, and he also was uh, demonic right and so I had to go from teaching her how to use the powers to actual battle so I did like I told you guys last week I said um Ahaya elemental powers come forth holy fire and then um I had the the whatever whatever I was saying, and then I was I was going into a spiritual warfare, and I was fighting uh, the the evil spirit. Now, in my dream, it was just like you see now. It was like I was doing this, but there was no fire, there was no special effects. You know, it wasn't like a Hollywood movie. Movie. It was like you see me doing now. I was I was doing like this, right? I was, this is just like I was doing like that. There was nothing, you didn't see anything coming out of my hand, but it was working, right? So I was fighting this evil spirit. And then um, it didn't, it was only like two or three minutes. It was very short and quick. You know, I just, it was only two or three minutes. And at the very end, the thing that just was like the knockout that ended the battle was I said, um, submit to Ahaya or something like that. Submit to Ahaya. I said that and then it just it disappeared and when I said that I woke up right that was like a I woke up and so 
when I woke up, that's when the Holy Spirit started to tell me what I'm supposed to tell you. And this very often happens this way. When I come on camera and I'm saying something, it's because that's what I was told to say. Okay. All right. So I said, submit to Ahaya. He disappeared. I woke up and immediately what was put on my spirit was the understanding of me being called to, to teach right now. At the beginning of this ministry, the past four years, I was not teaching, as I've explained before, I was doing the role of a messenger, as a messenger, because I didn't know this information before I told you the information. I learned the information while I was giving the message and after I gave the message, okay? I had to go through this four-year process as well. But now we've learned it. Now we have our spiritual Bachelor of Arts, okay? And we're about to go to grad school and, and wrap this thing up. So now I know the information, okay? So now I and you and all of you who, who are 144,000, who are uh, Melchizedek priest, you also have been uh, learned, have learned and tra been trained. And now you as well will be going out and now you will be teaching. Now we're going to be teachers, okay? And now we can teach this to the uh, people, the remnant, the people who will be coming after us. And as I've said before, since the beginning of this ministry, we learned in Troll Hunters that we have five groups of the Bridal Army. And there is a group of the Bridal Army that will not be coming until after the Calamity. After, I don't know what the Calamity is going to be. But right now we can see that the angel came and told me I had five months to, to um, cross over. And after that, it would be more difficult. Five months is uh, will be the deadline for five months is July uh, 10th, the new moon of July. So now we can already see here in April that we're on the brink of war, okay, with Russia and, and China, is, every, the whole world is like ready to go to war. The economic collapse, um, this pandemic, this uh, pestilence, which we know is just going to get out of control with the interference from uh, you know what, the V for Vendetta. So all of these things we can see just coming together to to, to just make this horrible poo-poo cake, okay? <laughs> we can see that it's probably going to be jumping off any day now. Um, and so we can see these prophecies coming true right before our eyes. So when all this stuff combines and pops off and we have the calamity and the, the Prince of Persia arrives to fix everything and um, his mask of fall, this is the time area after that calamity that the the last group is going to wake up and, and say, oh, we get it now. We understand what you've been talking about and then come together so we can be, you know, pop locking and getting it on. All right. So this dream was showing me the work of teaching the next level of what we're going to be doing, teaching what we've learned and how the response of this is going to be from some people because they're not able to either receive it for different reasons and the the demonic the the warfare the spiritual warfare we're going to have to go through to reach people okay so there's another dream i'm going to tell you about from a sister just after i'm done explaining this as confirmation because she sent this dream to me last night before i went to bed so the dream that i had is complete confirmation to the dream that she had um, but one thing at a time. So this dream, and that's what this dream is explaining. It's explaining the job we're going to be doing as teachers. That's the next phase. And the, some of the resistance we're going to come to through, go through. And the work that has to be done is it's a spiritual battle that we're going to have to be going through for these people. Okay. Do you, do you, do you hear me? That's why, that, see, let me, let me just say what the Holy Spirit told me to say. Okay. This whole four year uh, experience on YouTube, I came here, did this because I was commanded to do this. I didn't do it to build up my own nothing. I came here out of obedience to the father. And this whole four years has been like the wizard of Oz. It's been like Dorothy and Oz. It's just been like, you know, you're, you're going on your road, you're walking down the yellow brick road, na -na 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 -na, and then you're meeting all these different people, you know, and every person represents something. Every person is a lesson. Every person is a universe. That's what I've experienced over the past four years, meeting different people going down my road. Okay. The yellow brick road. So one, these are the different type of people that a Holy Spirit has brought and, and to, to show me and demonstrate this. 
a lot of, of, of intellectuals showed up at the beginning because this information is intellectually stimulating, I guess, but this is not for, this information is not for your intellect. It's not for your smarts. It's not for, um, to make you feel, uh, intelligent or feel smart or feel good or feel like, you know, stuff. It, it actually has nothing to do with that at all. And people got caught up in their intellect, like trying to show they're smart. You know what I mean? And that's not what this is about. This has nothing to do with your brain. I mean, it has to do with the anatomy of your brain more than the, the, the intellectual capacity of your brain. Do you see what I mean? It's, uh, we have at uh, Wakefulness Theology, we have uh, priests who don't have an education. They might have gone, um, I don't know um, the education, like the lowest education level of one of our members, but some of, uh, there's a, a, a member that is um, learning to read, you know, and it has nothing to do with your your intellect. It has nothing to do with your smarts. And I don't know why people have not understood this. They, they come to the information and they're like, oh, that's over my head. It's not about your head. This is spiritual nourishment for your soul and your spirit to help you mature and to understand and to be able to go higher because these concepts that are higher, if you don't understand them, you're going to be afraid and reject them. That's what it's, that's the only thing that it's about. And a lot of people who come and they, they don't understand it and they don't take the time to understand it and they reject it. You're rejecting the most high father. This is from him. This is not from me. This is not my way. This is his way. So if you get all tangled up into the, 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 the intellect of it, you, 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 those people, you know, this is like a parable, Holy Yahushua, Holy Yeshaya. He was saying the parable of the seeds and, you know, some fell on, on the thorns and some fell on the, you know, this and the that and they didn't grow because they got choked out or because the birds ate them. You know, this parable I'm talking about being too intellectual is, is, is going to get you choked out so that you're not going to receive the manna because you're, you're too much in your brain and your intellect with it. It, it. it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your heart. It always has, and it always will completely have to do with your heart. Do you love people? Do you love yourself? Do you love the most high father above everything? How do you treat people? That's what it is. That's what it's about right there. Okay. So the, the intellectual smarty pants people, they, they get, they don't make it very far. Okay. Because you get wrapped up in your own thinking and your, your, you, your ways. We don't understand the most high father's ways are higher than our ways. And we cannot lean on our own understanding. So if you're trying to figure it out in your brain, you're going to get choked up and caught up on stuff. Okay? It's about your heart. And it's about you being fed spiritual maturity so that you're able to go up higher. And that's about it. So I'm, I met the intellectuals um, that want to argue you down about stuff. And, it, you know, Holy, Holy Spirit would tell me a message. You know, whatever the message is... She, I would get the message and then intellectuals want to argue me down about it. I, it didn't come from me. So don't take it to father. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the intellectuals didn't get very far. Lazy. Do you know how much work this is? When you read the Bible, first of all, lazy people never read the Bible. I've been saying for years, you got to read the Bible from cover to cover. I'm not saying that because I'm saying it. I'm saying it because Holy Spirit told me to do it. And out of obedience, I did it. And I immediately saw the change in my life and understanding and my ministry popped off after that. And so I've been telling you, and most Christians, y'all ain't even read the Bible. How are you supposed to know something? You're lazy. You're just being lazy. You ain't read the Bible. You supposed you claim it's the word of God. You claim it's the word of God. You claim that you believe it's the word of God, but you don't have time to read the word of God. 
Yah, the most high father who created everything. So then you don't believe it's the word of Yah. Because that's what I say about these videos. I'm like, these videos came from heaven. They came from father. They came from the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, you're going to watch them. If you don't believe that, you're not going to watch them. It's simple. So if you're letting the lazy keep you from doing something as simple as receiving the word of y'all yourself, not from nobody else, not from the church, not from your sister, not from your dog, you. So laziness, we talked about from the beginning, spiritual practice. I've done video after video after video about it. You got to be, this is a daily, hourly thing. Like the Bible says, you need to be constantly in prayer. We are in the matrix. If you fall off a day and don't pray or don't uh, spend time with Holy Yahushua or whatever, the smallest little whatever it is to keep you in remembrance, you will be forgetting. It is the matrix. Okay, if I didn't do this every day, if I didn't, you know, wake up and, um, you know, do my prayers and then, you know, whatever I got going on every day that I do to stay in remembrance, if I didn't do that for a, a couple of days, three days, one week, I'd be back here next week. Like, I don't even know if any of that was true. I would be doubting too. And you will forget. You can't be lazy up in this piece. You got to be working daily. And, and people make it act like it's too hard. It's not that hard. It turns into a routine. You wake up and you you pray. You you call down the fire. You you do your spiritual warfare prayer. You put on the armor of the Most High Father. You you know you go through your day and you you do whatever else you do during the day. You read your scripture. You know you 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 meet and pray online or whatever. You 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 observe the Sabbath. You you know you do whatever. You, you need to be doing to, to stay in remembrance of the Father. It's not that hard, but folks be lazy. And I met so many lazy people that was constantly coming and saying, help me, help me. And then I tell them what to do. When you're attacked, you put on spiritual uh, uh, music and you worship. They too lazy to even do that. They too lazy. And then they're like, well, I don't understand why. I don't understand why, why, why? Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, Father's telling you what to do, Holy Spirit's telling you what to do, and you're just not doing it. Okay, so you, it, lazy. Narcissistic. I've met a few narcissistic. I mean, not as many as the other. I've met a lot of lazy. Um, and, and, if, and when I say this, I'm not calling the people lazy. Please understand this. They have a spirit. These are spirits I'm talking about. It is a, 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 the, one of the seven deadly sins. It is the seven um, enemies of Israel I'm talking about, not the people. I love you. I love you. And, and Father loves you. And Holy Yahushua loves you. Holy Yeshia loves you. He died on the cross for us. I'm not talking about you as a human being. I'm talking about that spirit you got to get rid of, okay? And that's what all of this is coming down to. Um, the same with all of these are spirits, okay? Narcissistic. Um, I only met one or two. There's a whole bunch of lazy spirits, a whole bunch of intellectual spirits, but uh, narcissistic. There was, I, I met about one or two on my trip down Yellow Brick Road. And believe me, uh, again, this is coming from Holy Spirit. I'm not being judgmental. And at the end, I'm going to wrap it up with a bow. So thank you very much for um, sitting through this. As um, King Yahusha Samson, he had the, the message from Holy uh, Yeshaya and the patriarchs and the Most High Father Ahia, and he was saying that he and I um, are. He's my brother. I'm his sister, and and uh, the father confirmed that it has taken us 20 years to become who we are right now. For you, you see who I am right now. Okay, I'm going to Tanzania to start my music ministry. All right, with with brethren, with uh, the two menorahs. We now have our two menorahs, right? It has taken 20 years for me to go from, you know, who I was to this person. And and Holy Father, Heaven, uh, Holy Yeshaya have, have been working on me tirelessly day and night to get me to this point. And all praise, glory, and honor to them. Thank you for saving me, Father. Thank you for saving me, Holy Yeshaya. I know it's not because of anything that I've done to deserve it. I, I know that. I know it's just because you love me. Because you sent me here, you called me. And you and you got me through. And you had to intervene a few times, but you got me through. And I thank you. And I give you the glory. I'm going to have to pull it back. So these narcissistic people, arrogant, 
They came to me during my journey and told me, no, you're not doing right. No, you're not right. No, you're not good enough. No, you're a witch. No, you're you're a new age. No, you're a sinner. No, you you don't deserve. You shouldn't be. You all of all of that judgment. And uh, and all I was doing was following Father. And uh, I made it through because I refused to listen to other people who were telling me that I wasn't good enough, I wasn't right, I wasn't this, I wasn't that, okay? Because I have a personal relationship with Father. I can hear him. He talks to me directly. I have my dreams. I have, I can read his holy language. So I have been faithfully following him and just letting all the blah, blah be blah, blah, okay? And that's, those are those narcissistic people who come on my Everybody has their own road, okay? You know your road. If you if you are following a father, you know your road, and nobody else can tell you. you. Nobody else knows. Only you know. So if you are living that life, you are about that life, you are a servant of the Most High, and you are living righteously, meaning, again, to give you the definition of righteous, Galatians 3.6, even as Abraham believed Yah, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So when I'm saying righteousness, I don't mean, it's not because I'm all it is or nothing. I, there's no good in me that did not come father, from Father. You cannot have good. Good does not exist without the Father, okay? He is good. When we say he is the word, he is good. So if you got good, then you got the Father somewhere, okay? And if you don't have the Father, then you got no good. Okay, so when I'm talking about righteousness, that's what I'm talking about. Galatians 3, 6, not because I'm all of that. It's because I believe the Most High Father. I'm sorry, this is the last video. I got to get this out, okay, because I'm not coming back about this. I'm done with this, okay? Holy Spirit has told me, she, she, let me, she let me free. She let me go. She said, look, you just give them a tongue lashing. Just let it out. That's what I'm about to do. They came to me on my road, on the yellow brick road, to say, no, mm -mm, do it this way. Go to the right. Go to the left. Do it the way I want you to do it. Because they did not believe that I was following Father. Don't you let those people take you off your road. Don't you let those people take you off your road. And if you do, it's because inside of you, you still have an enemy of, of Israel. Israel, you still got pride or... Uh, fear or I don't know what you still got something if you let them take you off that road because I've had them come and say oh if you do this then I'll um endorse you and then your ministry is going to prosper you know oh if you do that then I'll come and help you to do this and to do that so that the ministry is going to prosper but you know what I didn't have ego because I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for my name. I'm not, I'm doing it out of obedience. So there was nothing they could promise me. There was nothing that I needed from them. So I kept going on my road and here I am. So uh, uh, again, to those people, this is a warning to you to let people, you have to, you have to be able to judge righteously. Okay. Take everything to the Father. You don't want to have you don't want to be the cause of somebody stumbling on, on their journey, on their path, because that's going to be on your head. That's going to be blood on your hands. Alright? Um, pride, the proud. The the proud people, they 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 refuse to come together um, because they have their own thing and on I mean for me coming together is on on any level you know what I mean you have your ministry you have your ministry I have my ministry we can come together and still work together you know what I mean I'm not trying to absorb everybody into wakefulness theology or anything like that I just if I have a message and you have a message and you have a message I want to put our messages together so that everybody can understand the message to the maximum of our ability. That's my, that's, that's been my job, right? And it, it wasn't about me. It wasn't about my ministry. And it, you know what I mean? And there's just some people who 
they want to stay because they want to stay separate because they have their that you know it's their their thing and i understand that but we've been commanded to come together we've been commanded to come together and work together and there's almost nothing i can do because the people the people who have the spirit of pride it's like they always either look down or you know like they don't i don't i don't know i really can't even tell you because i don't understand the spirit very well i don't i, I but it it interferes uh with the movement of the holy spirit in the body of christ okay and it's a big problem and if we could all humble ourselves i'm doing my best to humble myself all the time every day and i repent all the time as much as i possibly can and at the end of this speech i'm going to be explaining that but we need to we need to bring ourselves down everybody i don't care if you are the head of a church with uh, two million people um and i i don't care if you are you you work with a partner and y'all got 10 people on your YouTube it, it doesn't matter if we are um called and chosen 144,000 priest of the Melchizedek priesthood we should be working together accepting each other helping each other and working together it shouldn't be like well I'm I have a building and uh you know you're just on YouTube but I have a, a degree and you you know you just started I mean what is that you know what I mean? The, it, it just, it doesn't work. And at the end of the day, it keeps us separated. And it's not going to, we're not going to be able to come together until that calamity happens and all of the falsities break down like glass and people can actually see who is who because the people that are taking that V for Vendetta is going to be a very clear separation of people. And then we're going to be able to come together and work together. And then someone who had a ministry with 2 million people are going to be able to finally reach out to the people that just started and have 10 people on, on their subscribers and without all the, 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 the stuff. Right. But until then, we got we got these major massive egos that are, are, are keeping us apart. And it's just um, it's, it's sad. Uh, no love. No love. I'm going to tell you. Again, some people that I, I poured everything I could into them, time, sometimes money, um, encouragement, the, the work I'm doing on YouTube here. This is like a weekly, daily work, okay? And um, in return, people would come to talk about me and say that I'm a witch and say that I'm new age and, and gossip and, and lie about my past saying taking my past life and distorting it in a way that was not true, okay? And use it against me to discredit the ministry. And the people that I was working with, like on a daily, like talking to on the phone, encouraging, working with, they believed the lies that the other people said without even coming to talk to me and saying, hey sister, I heard this, is it true? You know, what's going on? Are you okay? No, no, they didn't. They believed a complete stranger that they had never met, didn't know from a can of paint. They believed that person over me, took that person's side over me, someone who they did know, who was invested in them and, and working together, and just, and just left. Just left. Some of them didn't say goodbye. Some of them didn't even say a prayer for me. Like, oh, sister, you're lost. I, I pray that you you find your way. God bless you. I'm, I'm going to go my own way. Love you in Christ. I didn't even get that. They just ghosted. Okay? That's not love. It says in scripture, it's very clearly written in scripture. Matthew 18. What is it? Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall transgress against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained a brother. It's written there, black and white, the way we're supposed to treat each other. Okay? And it's also written to uh, love your brother and to treat him as you want to be treated. Okay? These people did not do that with me. They did not do that with me. They did not return the love that I was giving to them. Okay, that that's no love. That's what that is. That is not having love in your heart like Christ has love for us in his heart.
I met a lot of those people, a lot of those people, people come in and leaving comments. You know, you, you, I got like hours, thousand, hundred, I got hundreds of videos, thousands of hours of, of videos. And you're going to come to one video and you're going to point out one little thing I say and just run with it to, to, you know, to hit me over the head with your doctrine and not taking the time to go back and look at the videos to, to, to understand the full point of what I'm saying. Not taking the time to pray to the Most High Father and get confirmation before you come after me like a vicious wolf. That is not love, okay? That is not love. Controlled by spirits. Oh, Holy Spirit is having me tell y'all today. Four years. The church. You want to know why the church is in the situation the church is in? It's because of all this stuff I'm telling you right now. The brick and mortar church, okay? I don't want to say all. I'm not going to say all of y'all. You go up in a brick and mortar church and you're going to find more people in there with spirits than you're probably going to find walking down the street, okay? I'm talking about unclean spirits. Spirits, the enemy of Israel, okay? The seven enemies, the seven deadly sins. You're probably going to find more of them up in that church then you might find casually walking down the street, okay? Because the church is not teaching spiritual warfare and the church uh, is um, allowing these things to go on and not saying anything about it. Because you think that once you get saved, that means you don't have any more spirits and that's not true. When you get saved, you declare war on the, the, the enemy, Okay, on the kingdom of darkness, and they come after you. And you got two choices. Either you learn to fight and you know how to fight so, so that you can get through to, to the higher levels, or you you gonna be dealing with these spirits. It just making your life, turning your life upside down. And again, it's not about, I'm not saying you, you're possessed or anything like that. There's different levels as we learned with Derek Prince, okay? There's different levels of this, but you can still have the influence and being a bound, bounded by them and afflicted by them, okay? And the church does not preach deliverance. And that's why here at Wakefulness Theology, you it is a, 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 a obligation, a must that all of our priests that we work together with, you have to go through an actual deliverance. Either Holy, either holy Yeshaya can come, the angel can come, the Most High Father, whoever from heaven can come and you have an actual deliverance, like you see the spirits come up and leave in your body, like an actual deliverance. I'm talking about a supernatural experience. OK, or you can go to uh, King Yosha Samson and his wife and eventually all of us will be casting out spirits um, or another person. But you have to be delivered. OK, it's not just, yes, you accept Lord Jesus uh, of Nazareth as your Lord and Savior. OK, you repent of your sins. You change your life. Good. You're saved. Hallelujah. Now you need to be delivered. Okay, you need to go through a deliverance. Okay, you need to you need to be delivered from the seven deadly sins. It is a spiritual supernatural act. It's not in your mind, it's not in your thought, it's not in your imagination. It is actually the spirits leaving your body. Okay, be it through vomit, through spit, through this or that. It, it you they need to come out. Okay? We we're going we do that process and and it, until until you clean till you feel like it's gone okay whatever it is it could be even physical ailments you know and so what I'm saying is at wakefulness theology we um we we know these things and we deal with them and so that's why we don't have the bickering and the gossiping and the lying and the going behind people's back and the, all of the stuff that you have at, at regular uh, brick and mortar churches. Because we know that we need to be delivered. Okay? Not only that, but we repent publicly. Okay? Just like it says in scripture, James 5, 16. 
Confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So at least twice a year minimum on Passover and on uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, we, we uh, repent to each other in the group out loud, okay, our sins. And sometimes we even do it on video. You see a video where uh, we repented uh, publicly on Facebook and YouTube of our sins. This is like a, a, a thing that needs to be done uh, often. Minimum once or twice a year. Minimum. So this is how we're, we're getting around the attacks of the enemy. This is how we're still able to stand. Because the enemy comes in with every church. You, every church. The moment you accept Jesus Christ of Nazareth as your Lord and Savior, you declare war on the kingdom of darkness. And they're coming after you. So if you don't know how to fight, you how you plan to get up in them levels? Every church has this problem. And so the enemy can come in and he uses anybody who is not completely filled and delivered with the filled with the Holy Spirit and delivered. He will use you. To bring it down from the inside. And you can be nice and all of that. It has nothing to do with that. You can be a good person. This is not a character judgment. We're talking about spirits again. Okay? So, um, lots of people controlled by spirits. Lots of it. I've seen it come and go, come and go, come and go. And because we're online and because this process was about being a messenger and, and you know, the next... The next side is going to be about casting out demons. We weren't equipped at that time to deal with it, but, you know, faithfully, we're just going to keep going on our yellow brick road and, um, you know, that'll be happening in the future. But that's a big problem, church. And again, until you ready, church, all of y'all, all of the brick and mortars, the biggest church to the smallest church, online, wherever, all of the groups of the 144,000, you need to make sure that your members are delivered. Okay, an actual, we need to see some spitting, we need to see some something fainting, we need to, it, it doesn't have to be dramatic. What I'm saying is there needs to be a, a, a supernatural feeling of something being lifted from you if there is something to be lifted. Impatient. Walking down the yellow brick road, I saw so many people come in. They said, oh, you know, there's not, there's no unity in this group. Wakefulness theology they're talking about. Oh, there's no unity here. So they leave. They come to the prayer meeting. Oh, you know, there's no structure. So they leave. Uh, they'll, they'll, you know, come to the video and they'll be like, you know, oh, the microphone isn't good. I couldn't hear it well. So they, they leave, whatever. Whatever the issue is, none of them came and said, oh, there's not unity here. What can I do to help bring unity? Or, you know, I, I believe that this is the Father working here and I'm just going to pray for the situation and I'm going to be patient and just know that he's going to, uh, you know, fix it, make it better and, and possibly use me to, to do that. Very few people came with that attitude. Most just came and was like, this, this structure isn't where I expect it to be or where I want it to be, so I'm out. No patience whatsoever. And I'm really sorry the most for those people because now we are going to a beautiful place, a beautiful place. I just know what Father has promised me and I'm standing on his promise and we have everything to be hopeful for and thankful for. And, and those people who did not have the patience uh, to to just stick it out <laughs> and and to lend a hand to make it better you have to wait on the lord you have to wait psalms 27:14 wait for ahia be strong and take heart and wait for ahia so those people who were too impatient because things didn't look like what they wanted it or what they expected and they and they left you didn't wait on Ahia, okay? And so I hope not, but if you continue this behavior of, of letting this impatient spirit control you, you will be missing out, okay? So you, stop it, please. So all of that to just let you know 
what I've experienced over the past four years of doing this ministry. I think Holy Spirit wants me to do it as well because you as well will be experiencing these things in your ministry because we're at midweek, um, June 6th. Uh, 2021 we're at midweek and we still have another three and a half years of doing our testimony so you when you go out to do your ministry you will be experiencing these things so I'm giving you the heads up right now all right um, now just so people don't come and think that I think that I'm all of that and it's not again I said it's not for me the Holy Spirit gave me this dream and this message to give you but to um, clarify who I am and what I think I am. Uh, let's look at Isaiah 646. So 646 is, um, it means honor in um, Roger Thesaurus. And honor means fulfilling a covenant. So it's a very beautiful verse, actually. And it says, um, but we are all like an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So that's who I think I am. And my righteousness is like a filthy rag. All right. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I don't think I'm higher than anybody. I am simply a servant. Let the person who is first among you serve the others. I am a servant, okay? I don't think higher of myself and I don't think I know a doggone thing. I get my instructions from Father and I am obedient to do it. That's it. But I wanted to talk about this verse quickly because I think some of us are misquoting it. Please understand that it says that we are like an unclean thing or some of the other versions it says uh, we have become like one who is unclean uh, or we are all infected or, you know, you have different translations. Uh, but the, the most important thing is, you know, like we as humans, as I've said before, we were created, the elect were created at the beginning uh, before the world was created. We stood uh, with the Most High Father and Holy Yeshaya before the world was created. We, he loves us. We are his temples. Our bodies are his temple. So it's not only spiritual. This is another thing I just pray that one day the church will understand. It's not just the spiritual. It's the physical two. The two must become one. New Jerusalem is coming here on earth. Okay? He is our bodies, our physical bodies are his, is, our physical bodies are his temples. So what I'm saying is, is that do you think the father wants to live in an unclean temple? No. So what does that mean? It means he loves us and we are holy. We are capable of being holy once we believe in Yah, when we believe in Yah, righteousness is accounted unto us. But no matter what we do, our righteousness is never going to be like the righteousness of, 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 of the Most High Father. Compared to Him, our righteousness is like rags, not us, not us. Our righteousness is like rags. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. I am a humble servant. I don't see myself higher than anybody else. I don't see myself as some, you know, um, what is it called? Um, um, I'm not being self-righteous. I'm saying simply that as long as you believe in the Most High Father, not just with your lips, but with your life, with all of your heart, with all of your mind and all of your soul, and you pick up your cross and you follow him, righteousness will be accounted unto you. But no matter what you do, compared to the Most High Father and heaven and those heavenly things that we're trying to attain, our righteousness is like rags unto him. That's, that's, that's the level. 
You see what I mean? I mean, the level, it's a, it's a huge gap. Do you see what I mean? So I know where I am. I know who I am. I'm a servant, all right? And all I pray is to have the heart that Holy Yashaya gives me, his heart, uh, a heart like his, so that I can love my brothers and sisters as myself and love the Most High Father with all my heart, mind, and soul and be obedient and may his will be done in my life and on earth as in heaven and in your lives on earth as it is in heaven. And this message is clearly just a recap of what the Holy Spirit has taught me over these four years and let it be uh, helpful to you. A blessing to you so that when you encounter these things, you don't get discouraged. Just know that this is the way it is. And the remedy to this is learning his language, okay? And um, learning to fight, cast out spirits, okay? And deliverance for all of Israel. So his whole learning to speak his holy language, it is... The reason why he's taught us this over the past four years is because learning his holy language, it is the remedy to twisted thinking and it prevents error. All right. Again, I'm not saying that this is not the way I speak. This is what heaven is saying through his holy language. Being able to, to read his holy language, being, being numbers and colors and signs and symbols and so forth, it, it, it is the remedy to twisted thinking, okay? And in these last days, it will keep you from being deceived and being led into error. So I pray that you receive this. If, if you believe that this has come from the Most High Father, then you will go back and catch up on these videos because this is manna that can, that can save lives, okay? And if you believe that the Bible is the Word of God, then you will be reading it from cover to cover, not jumping around and reading one script here and one script there from cover to cover. That's the only way you're going to know the truth. How are you going to know if someone's telling you the truth? If you don't know His Word... So uh, I'm done. I'm getting off my, my soapbox. But this is what my dream said at, at the end of the dream. It said, submit to Ahaya. Submit to Ahaya. I'm done. Before we go through the hand movements, I want to uh, show you the dream from the sister that confirms what I just said. Uh, think this dream comes from Sister Heavy. Uh, thank you so much from Facebook. She said that she had this dream, uh, and it was yesterday, Saturday. I had a dream. I was going to a training school, and I had a dream, too, that King Yosha Samson and Queen Aaliyah Ora went to, and uh, so we were also with her at this training school on an island, and they were on missions, and they had reached many souls on that island, Okay. Then I was flying over the ocean. I seen beautiful seals. I don't know why I was shown seals in the ocean. Then I, then I see, I seen these seals were devoured and eaten. I know I had more dreams, but I couldn't remember them. And that's all I remembered. So, um, my interpretation of that, you know, you, you can take your interpretation as you want, but you see right here, the, the seals. Okay. My understanding of that dream is the exact same thing of, of what I had with my dream uh, that I just spent, I don't know how many uh, minutes explaining to you. It's that the seals is a wordplay on those who are sealed. Revelation 7, 3 saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of Yah in their foreheads. So that right there, the sealed in their forehead in my understanding, it is the sealed, are the seals, represented by seals, swimming in the water around the island, okay? Those were the seals. Those represents the saints, the, the chosen who have been sealed in their forehead, and they're swimming in, in the ocean, okay? The people that are on the island are those who are training. Like I said, we just did four years of training, um, and we still got another three and a half years of, of work to do our testimony. And then, you know, when we're, we're fully trained, okay, we've reached the, the top of the mountain, we're fully trained. 
and we're ready. We're like Jesus of Nazareth. We're like Holy Ashaya, and we're out there in them streets healing folks and casting out demons, just like the disciples, uh, our, our forefathers. That's what I'm talking about, the harvest. I mean, like we're, we're, we're there and we're doing that. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. But, um, so the people on that island are the ones training for that. Okay. Those people are safe because they are the ones that are going to be doing, going out. He, he's calling us out. He's sending us out, as it says in scripture, two by two. He's sending us out as sheep among wolves to do this work in the end times and the end days. Okay. That's what, that's what all of this is for. Okay. To become like Holy Ashaya. Now the people that are sealed, but are in the water, they get devoured. They get eaten. They get eaten. They get eaten. Okay. Because they don't know how to defend themselves against, uh, the demonic, uh, spirits and entities that are going to be released on this earth. Did you hear? Okay. You know, CERN, you know, all of that stuff, they are opening pits and portals. Okay. There will be an evil on this earth. You can already see it that we ain't never seen before. Okay. Or in a long time. Is going to be coming. And those who are not trained to deal with it will be eaten. Okay? It doesn't mean you 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 still going to go to heaven. It's good. It's all good. But you're going to be eaten, boo. Yeah, I'm chomp, chomp. Ch chomp. All right? So I highly suggest you get on the island and you start your training. Okay? Those of you who trying to be like, I'm new age and I'm a witch and all of that, that's a lie from the pit of hell. So you believe what you want to believe. You take that to the most high father and you ask him and then you get to training. And, and so the water in her dream could be the water event. I don't know. We, I, what we learned in troll hunters was that there would be two, you know, foreseeable big events one, I said 2019. I didn't know what it was. It, it looked like it could have been a water event, but it, it, it was uh, it turned out to be the five uh, waves of um, energy that hit the earth that started our transformation and started waking us up and all of this that we went through and the, 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 the pestilence that completely changed our world in 2019. So that happened. OK, and then we saw in the foreseeable future a water event. And, you know, we saw war and we saw uh, all of the things that are happening. The volcanoes, um, the upcoming earthquake that's going to be like, I don't know, 9.5 or, or some huge uh, whatever. All of these things will be coming to pass. OK, so for me, that is the, the seals in the water. OK, the turbulence. Be it a water event or an earthquake or economic collapse or war or whatever is about to pop off. That we've been warning that the Holy Spirit has had us warn about all these years. So this is your final. I'm not coming back again on this. This is it. I did it. Thank you, Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you for calling me to do this work. Thank you. And now I'm done. So those who have received it, I pray that you received it. I pray that it's a blessing for those who are coming in the future. I pray you receive it. I pray that it's a blessing. I love you so very much in Christ. And, and those who did not receive it, I, I wish you well. I really do. I really do. So from here, um, I'm going to go back over quickly the, the hand movements one by one. And then I'm going to stop this video. And then in a separate video, I'm going to uh, show you the, um, the final dance, the final dance, the final hand movements. I've already explained uh, that this is a part of our warfare. It's a part of our training. It is to help us to focus. It's a 20 minute track. F Holy Father told me to make it 20 minutes because this is the time that you need to, to hone in your concentration. When you're casting out demons, you need to be able to focus and concentrate. Your mind can't be wandering around about what you saw on TV and what you ate last night or what somebody said to you at church. You need to be able to clear your mind and focus and concentrate to cast out demons. This is going to help you do that. 
The more that you are focused on heaven and heavenly things, the stronger you become spiritually. It's a muscle like lifting weights. Okay. And it is worship. It is worship and it is embodying the, the name of the most high father, his frequency. And it is, it is putting you in tune and align with his holy name. I'm not going to say it again unless he commands me to.